Hi there! In this video, we will learn about the nature of carbon-halogen bond. Knowing this nature of carbon-halogen bond is very important to understand the physical and chemical properties of alkyl halides and aryl halides. The chemistry between this carbon-halogen bond is very interesting. So, we know that halogen is more electronegative than carbon, right? So, we can say halogen, be it fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine is more electronegative as compared to carbon which is less electronegative. And as you remember, electronegativity is the ability of an element in a compound to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself. So, in this case, halogen is more electronegative, right? So, it pulls the electron density towards itself, resulting in partial negative charge on halogen and partial positive charge on carbon. So, I can write delta minus on halogen and delta plus on carbon, right? That means there exists polarity in this bond, right? And generally, we know that as this electronegativity difference would increase, for example, we know that Fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine and chlorine is more electronegative than bromine and then iodine. So, as this electronegativity difference between carbon and halogen will increase, the polarization of the carbon-halogen bond will increase. Now, why is the knowledge of the polarization of the CX bond even important? Well, we'll soon find out. But first, let's talk about the most obvious and important parameter, the bond length. See, when we have carbon-fluorine bond, carbon-chlorine bond, carbon-bromine bond and carbon-iodine bond, clearly as we go down the group, the size of the atom increases. Hence, what happens? The bond length increases, right? So, the length of carbon-iodine bond is maximum and carbon-fluorine bond is minimum. As a result of this bond length, as this bond length is increasing, what happens to the bond energy? the bond enthalpy decreases. It's easier to break carbon-iodine bond as compared to a carbon-fluorine bond, right? So, here is the data to validate it. You can see that carbon-fluorine bond, the bond length is least. Carbon-iodine bond, the bond length is maximum, right? As we are going down the group, the bond length is increasing and check the bond enthalpy. The amount of energy required to break the bond is maximum for carbon-fluorine and minimum for carbon-iodine. Okay, now that we have looked at how long the bond is and how strong the bond is, it is time to now understand the internal tug of war for electrons between the atoms involved. I mean, it is the time to understand now the concept of dipole moment. So, dipole moment can be defined as two equal and opposite charges separated by a distance d. Okay, so here we have a dipole. What is a dipole? So, like I said, equal and opposite charges. For example, let's say I have a plus, I have a minus and it is separated by a distance d. When we are dealing with chemistry molecules and compounds, we deal with dipole moment a little differently. So, in chemistry, the charges are developed because of the difference in electronegativity, right? So, like we were discussing that there is a carbon-halogen bond, halogen being more electronegative has delta minus, carbon being more electropositive has delta plus. So, these are the charges here that we are talking about. So, yes, we can say that the dipole moment depends on the difference in the electronegativity and we take the magnitude of it. And instead of taking the distance of the dipole here in chemistry, we say that it is nothing but actually the bond length, alright? Now, it is important to understand that this Q is not strictly proportional to the difference in electronegativity, alright? And the real dipole moment actually depends on several other factors like uh, electronic environment, polarizability, electron cloud distribution, etc., okay? So, this is more used to understand the qualitative trend. So, let's understand it in this way that dipole moment of a bond depends on the magnitude of the difference in electronegativity and bond length. Well, even out of these two, the more dominating factor is the difference in electronegativity, okay? So, how about we take fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine are four halogens and compare it with the carbon and find out the difference in electronegativity of this halogen and carbon. So, electronegativity of carbon is 2.5. Electronegativity of halogen 
we know that most electronegative element is fluorine, then chlorine, then bromine and then iodine. So the difference in electronegativity is highest for carbon fluorine bond and of course lowest for carbon iodine bond and mind you this electronegativity scale that we are using here is Pauling scale to understand okay now like I said dipole moment of a bond depends on not just the difference in electronegativity it does depend on the bond length also but here if you see even though carbon fluorine bond has the highest difference in electronegativity, the bond length is least, isn't it? And that is where the most interesting part comes in. So if you see carbon iodine bond, well the bond length is highest but the electronegativity difference is least. So when we take both the factors in account, what we get is carbon chlorine bond here shows something exceptional. Check this out. Look at the dipole moment. Now note that the unit of the dipole moment is Debye and the dipole moment values which are given out here are the experimental values of the overall dipole moment of the entire molecule. All right. Don't miss on the fact that methyl fluoride, methyl chloride, methyl bromide and methyl iodide are tetrahedral molecules right it's a three-dimensional molecule so yes basically these are the result of the vector sum of all bond dipoles in the molecule now if you see even though we discuss that the more dominating factor is a difference in electronegativity and if we consider that then methyl fluoride should have had the highest dipole moment you see but that is not the case if you see, methyl fluoride has a dipole moment of 1.847 Debye. And here, CH3Cl has 1.86. Well, marginally high. Nonetheless, carbon chlorine bond here wins. Do you see that? Methyl chloride has the highest dipole moment. If you check methyl bromide, it's a little less than methyl fluoride, but yes. Out of the four, it is methyl chloride which is winning the game of dipole moment. So, well, that is what is very fascinating when we are talking about this dipole moment of the bond, which is methyl halide bonds. We have the cumulative effect of the two resulting in methyl chloride having the highest dipole moment, then methyl fluoride, then methyl bromide, and then we have methyl iodide. So this is an exceptional behavior. In nutshell, we can say that methyl chloride has the highest dipole moment as it has the best balance of the moderate bond length and significant electronegativity difference, maximizing its dipole moment. Now that you've understood the nature of the carbon-halogen bond, understanding the physical properties like boiling point and solubility, as well as the chemical properties like reactivity of different alkyl halides will become very simple.